Hey guys, we are going to read some more chapters from our Read Aloud, The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. Chapter 40 is called The Ship. Bright Bill was a flying fanatic, and his favorite place to fly was up on the grassy ridge. The robot and the gosling liked to spend afternoons up there, working on the finer points of flying. And it was on one such afternoon that they noticed something mysterious far out at sea. Bright Bill spiraled down to his mother, flopped onto the grass, and pointed to the horizon. Mama, what is that thing? Roz's computer brain found the right word. That is a ship. What's a ship? A ship is a large vessel used for ocean transport. Bright Bill's face scrunched up with confusion. confusion. Used by who? I do not know. It was the first ship either of them had ever laid eyes on. From the distance, it looked as though it were moving slowly, but it was actually racing through the waves. From that distance, it looked as though it were small, but it was actually one of the largest ships ever built. The robot and the gosling watched it crawl across the ocean until it finally disappeared to the south. Where had the ship come from? Where was it going? Who was on board? Roz and Bright Bill had many questions, but no answers. Chapter 41 is called The Summer. On clear summer days, Roz and Bright Bill and Chit Chat liked to go exploring. They investigated the island's sandy southern point. They marveled at the rainbows that curved up from the waterfall. They surveyed the forest from the branches of tall trees. They met new friendly creatures, and sometimes they met new unfriendly creatures. But the only creatures they had to worry about were the bears. One time, they came upon a bear fishing in the river, and Roz whispered, You know what to do. Bright Bill flew up and away, Chit Chat scurried home through the treetops, and Roz melted into the landscape as only she could. Later, they met back up at the nest and told the neighbors all about their brush with danger. On dreary summer days, they would stay inside. Roz asked Bright Bill and Chit Chat about dreaming and about flying and about eating and about all the things they could do that she could not. But the youngsters had too much energy to sit still for very long. They spent one drizzly afternoon kicking acorns around the nest. Chit Chat piled them up and then Bright Bill swung his big foot and the acorns went flying. The little friends chased the acorns as they bounced and rolled and spun across the floor. Then they made a new pile and kicked them again. Sometimes an acorn would bounce off Roz's body, clang, and everyone would laugh and giggle together. Even Roz laughed. Ha, 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 said the robot, trying to act natural. On clear summer evenings, they would sit outside and watch fireflies twinkling around the pond. They'd lie back and gaze up at the darkening sky. That's, that big circle is the moon, said Chit Chat. And those little lights are called stars. And one time, I tried to count them all, but I can only count up to ten. So I just kept counting to ten over and over. And I have no idea how many stars there are, but I know it's more than ten. They are not all stars, said Roz. Some of them are planets. What's a planet, said Chit Chat? A planet is a celestial body orbiting a star. What does celestial mean? Celestial means something that is in outer space. What's outer space? Outer space is the universe outside the atmosphere of our planet. What's the universe? The universe is everything and everywhere. Oh, so the universe is our island. None of them would ever really understand the universe, including Roz. Her computer brain knew only so much. She could talk about the earth and the sun and the moon and the planets and a few stars and not much else. The night sky was full of streaking, shimmering, and blinking lights that she simply couldn't identify. Clearly, Roz was not designed to be an astronomer. On dreary summer evenings, Roz and Bright Bill would curl up together, just the two of them, and listen to the rain pattering on the roof of the nest. The robot would tell stories of annoying pine cones and terrible storms and camouflaged insects, but the sound of rain always made Bright Bill sleepy, and he'd be out before his mother could ever finish a story. Chapter 42 is called The Strange Family. It was a sweltering afternoon, and the heat had put everyone in a bad mood. Roz was standing in the shade, watching her son out on the water. The other goslings were teasing him about something when they suddenly burst into laughter, and Bright Bill turned and hurried home with a stormy expression on his face. He stomped into the garden and right past his mother without saying a word. "'What is wrong, Bright Bill?' said Roz as she followed her son into the nest. "'Nothing,' he squawked. "'Leave me alone. "'Tell me what is wrong.' I don't want to talk about it. Maybe I can help. Mama, the other goslings were making fun of me. What did they say? They called you a monster and then laughed at me for having a monster mother. 
They should know by now that I am not a monster. Would you like me to talk to them? No, don't do that. That'll just make things worse. The robot sat next to her son. Mama, I know you're... I know you're a robot, but I don't understand what a robot is. A robot is a machine. I was not born. I was built. Who built you? I do not know. I do not remember being built. My very first memory is waking up on the northern shore of this island. Were you smaller back then, said the gosling? No, I have always been this size. Roz looked down at her weathered body. However, I used to be shiny like the surface of the pond. I used to stand straighter than a tree trunk. I used to speak a different language. I have not grown bigger, but I have changed very much. The robot wanted to explain things to her son, but the truth was that she understood very little about herself. It was a mystery how she had come to life on the rocky shore. It was a mystery why her computer brain knew certain things, but not others. She tried to answer Bright Bill's questions, but her answers only left him more confused. What do you mean you're not alive? squawked Bright Bill. It is true, said Roz. I am not an animal. I do not eat or breathe. I am not alive. You move and talk and think, Mama. You're definitely alive. It was impossible for such a young goose to understand technical things like computer brains and batteries and machines. The gosling was much better at understanding natural things like islands and forests and parents. Parents. The word suddenly left Bright Bill feeling uneasy. You're not my real mother, are you? There are so many kinds of mothers, said the robot. Some mothers spend their whole lives caring for their young. Some lay eggs and immediately abandon them. Some care for their offspring of other mothers. I have tried to act like your mother, but no, I am not your birth mother. Do you know what happened to my birth mother? Roz told Bright Bill about the fateful day in spring and how the rocks had fallen and one egg had survived, about how she'd put the egg in a nest and carried it away, about how she'd watched over the egg until a tiny gosling hatched. Bright Bill listened carefully until she finished. Should I stop calling you mama, said the gosling. I will still act like your mother no matter what you call me, said the robot. I think I'll keep calling you mama. I think I will keep calling you son. We're a strange family, said Bright Bill with a little smile, but I kind of like it that way. Me too, said Roz. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed. I will be back to read to you soon.